Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Shaka from Shaka Reacts. Today we've got another music teacher reaction and analysis video for you. Specifically, we're going to be checking out El Estepario Siberiano and his impossible song, aka the Bongo song, or uh, more informally known. I'm excited to see it. Let's do it. High tune, yeah. I like that. Oh, that's tuned way low. Okay, we gotta pause there. We gotta pause there. Okay, first of all, all right, all right, first of all, there is so much with 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 this dude with this, the groove father, as his shirt says clearly. There is so much to take in. It's it's bananas. Like we could literally rewind and watch this ten bazillion times, and we'd still not see everything. Um, first and foremost, obviously. Uh, we got two bongos here, guys. Uh, you know, a, a traditional, typical pair that we got put together. He's got a tom there. He's got a snare. He's got his, his bass. Uh, all the symbols and everything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we, what I'm really immediately drawn to. So obviously he's, he's kind of setting up the groove. He's setting up the whole process here. And what immediately caught me in this this second section that we've got here, so to speak, was the placement of his sticks. So we talked a little bit before when we did the blinding re, uh, blinding lights reaction. If you haven't seen that, you need to get over there and check it out, guys. Uh, we talked a little bit about stick placement on the drum. Uh, on the head specifically, and how that can really have an effect on your sound. And if if you're paying really close attention to this second section that we got here, you can hear this really high-tuned sound suddenly come in, even though there's not a new drum that has been introduced. If you've heard this before and you're like, whoa, 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 where did that come from? Where is that high sound coming from? It's because he has slightly changed that placement of the stick, guys. He's much, much, much closer to the rim, and as a result, he's getting a much higher pitch out of that. Uh, we're going to rewind a little bit so you guys can hopefully catch that and hear it. It's really hard to see because he's playing so fast. But uh, you just got to kind of take my word for it. Um, that, that's, that's what's going on here, essentially. It's really cool, really cool uh, little switch in placement of a stick. Coming up here. You can hear how that higher sound is there. If you're not listening with a really, really high end uh, mic or uh, headset or something like that, I can see how you easily could not hear this. If you're on a, if you're like on a cell phone, you're probably not going to hear this. To be honest with you guys, you've got to have a pretty high end set. Of, of headphones to hear this but it is very 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 slight and it is up there it's a much much higher frequency uh, it's just really cool how he's pulling that off and it's so subtle it's it's really easy to miss that if you don't have a top end uh headset on again not here it'll come in in this section it's almost like a timbila it's that high of a pitch
Yeah, take a breather. <laughs> I'm tired just watching you. Oh. Fun fact, before we continue to the next section, I can tell we're building into something pretty epic right now. Uh, fun fact, from, a, from a music teaching standpoint, guys, um, whenever we're working with students and trying to help them, you know, clean their playing and things like that, it's funny. You would typically think that some of these crazy fills, like some of the stuff that he was doing on the tom there, which was really impressive. It was re It's a really tough thing to do that clear on a tom that's that low. Um, you would think that would be the toughest stuff, but actually when you're when we were working with students a lot, the toughest thing to play correctly is actually this, this section that is where he's almost doing nothing. When you have this, this space of silence in music, it is so easy to rush and push the pulse through a section like this. And he does such a great job and I, he might have a click track. I, I obviously we can hear the actual music in the background, but it, beyond what we're hearing in the music track, there's no click track that I can tell. And his pulse and his his vi his uh, groove are right on point. It, it just shows it goes to show that he's got that subdivision just built into his body. It's we talk about it all the time when working with kids. You've got to be subdividing even if you're not actually playing anything with a lot of complexity. So like right now you're thinking. Like you're subdividing the whole way through that, keeping that pulse. This this is a cool groove here. Was crazy the the work i wish you guys could see what he's doing there uh, those of you that play sets uh you, you know and, and obviously i'm saying the word set a lot guys uh for those of you that are drummers out there uh in the music world we tend to say set a lot referring to the drum set uh, especially if you work with a ensemble full of percussionists you tend to specify the by the instrument so if i said drums that could refer to the quads, it could refer to the snare, it could refer to the basses, it could refer to the drum set player. So you tend to clarify by saying set. So if, if any of you are out there wondering, like, why does he keep saying set? That's why. It's because I'm referring to the, the drum set player specifically. It's just it's just what we do. It's what I'm used to doing, guys. So just point of clarification there. But what he's doing with his feet here is absolutely freaking amazing. I really wish you guys could see it. To maintain this pulse. And I love to, sorry, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to point out so many of those. There's so much stuff that he does that's incredible, guys. Watch his hand placement through this. So it, what his feet are doing are incredible to keep that pulse and to kind of keep a, a strong sense. But then his hands go into freaking light speed mode. But watch how he kind of, he creates a little crescendo in this by just changing his hand placement. It's so subtle. Again, we talked about placement with him. One of the things that he does so well is placement of the stick on the drum head to create changes in sounds. He just does this little crescendo by simply pushing his hand in just slightly. See how he's bringing it in? And then in again. Just really great. So he brings it in just a little bit, and then as he gets into the the extra super fast light, you know, light speed mode, as I like to call it, then he brings it out to bring off the, the dynamic and brings it back in again, again to bring that dynamic up a little bit more. Just great little stuff that you, if you're not an excellent, excellent, excellent player, you're not going to pick out little things that make just that little bit of difference in music. Uh, all right, we're we're gonna listen to this one more time, and then we're gonna keep going, guys. Just just such great stuff here. Love it. Just 
little, little fine tune. Oh, nice, nice fill. Okay, before we continue with this section, one of the other cool things I want to point out here. Uh, so I'm, I'm naturally drawn to his eyes through this section in particular. One of the things, so if you guys are not, uh, you know, high, high level musicians, you're, and, and to be clear, I'm not degrading anybody with this. But something that happens as you become a top, 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 top tier musician is just the, the fine tuning of muscle memory. Uh, so, for instance, I'm a trombone player by trade. I, like, I don't have to think twice about where my third position is or where my sixth position is. My arm just does it. It just knows. Similar to, like, a violin player knowing where, like, you know, first position second finger is or third or fourth position pinky finger, you know, or fourth finger. Uh, it, there is just this naturally ingrained muscle memory that occurs when you're a high top-end musician. A lot of times people would look at this and they would assume, you know, especially when his eyes are open and his eyes are moving around, that his eyes are looking and his hands are going where his eyes look, right? That's not what's happening. It, literally, he's he's just feeling the groove of the music and maybe as a point of reference, checking out like a symbol here or there kind of thing. He's not looking at the bongos at all. He's not looking at the toms. All of that is straight up muscle memory. He's not looking at any of these things. I want you guys, if, you, if you're you know kind of in awe of this, sit down if you ever get a chance at a drum set and try to do a fill between like three toms, let's say, like a high, mid, and a low, without looking at any of it. And it is insanely difficult to do. If you ever get a chance to play on a quad, for instance, uh, like with a marching band or something like that, try to do it without looking at it. <laughs> it's it's incredibly difficult to do. And that's what's happening here with him. He's he's not looking at any of these things. He's just pure, straight-up muscle memory. So I just wanted to really point that out and, and have all of you guys appreciate that aspect of what's happening here that it's just straight up muscle memory. He doesn't even have to look at the instrument to know where to play it at. It's incredible. In fact, at one point, he's going to close his eyes here. Right through here. He's not even looking. That was nuts. <laughs> that section was nuts. I, literally, if you played that with me not being able to watch it and see it, like all I was doing was listening, I would have thought that that was literally an entire drum line of a marching band playing a cadence. Uh, obviously, you've got a limitation in the number of quads you're hearing. You're only hearing two, but they're tuned very much, very similar to a quad for the most part. Like, I would assume there's a quad player. Um, you've got the toms there at the low end, so it does kind of feel like a, a you know, a quad, a full quad to some degree. You have a snare line, a bass line, you know, cymbals playing as well. Like, 
Like, I literally would think this would be like a D1 drum line playing a cadence in the stands if you did not show me the video of this. That's insane that one person can do what we just heard right there. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I have to rewind and hear that section again because it was, it was nuts. It was just straight up nuts. Uh, a little bit further than that. A little more, sorry. There we go. This part. The last, I saw, uh, there's so much that's insane in that. There's so much that's insane. But I, I, even, I, I got at least, though, I'm, a little bit, I'm like speechless. Just watch his left hand at the end of this. It's so easy with everything that's happening. Like, your ears just get overwhelmed by everything that's happening. Just, just focus solely on his left hand and look at what it does. I, like, I didn't think this was humanly possible. It's, it's incredible. Like, how does one do that? <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, at one point, his right hand does rejoin him again. But even that, before that right hand rejoins him, I didn't think that was humanly possible to play on one hand that fast. Just nuts. Oh my god. That that okay, the 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 crossover in that section is is bananas. All right, so so another thing to think about just from a from a pure sticking standpoint, like uh, just the incredible speed that he has to have to be able to play everything. Like, let's just pretend it's a snare directly in front of you. That in itself is impressive. But then I think this is the first time we really see where he's just going nuts in terms of left to right motion in his playing here. Uh, just watch how fast he has to switch from that snare slash bongo, you know, all the way over to that tom. That is such a far distance when you're playing so fast and so many notes. It's incredible. <laughs> what <laughs> the his reaction at the end absolutely says it all oh my god yeah that was incredible i like next level incredible incredible playing guys i just man i could i could watch this stuff all day long it is insane what he is pulling off and i am thoroughly 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 impressed with what he's able to do just just nuts
Man, I I love it. I love it. I love it. Hopefully, you guys love this as much as I did. Uh, I would if you did. I really appreciate it, guys. If you would like uh, and subscribe, obviously, to the channel, and more importantly, turn on the notifications, guys, so that you don't miss any more of the uh, the content that we've got coming out here for Ellis Depario Cibriano, because I can guarantee you we are going to continue checking this stuff out. It is incredible. Uh, last but not least, guys, if you want to continue your journey down the music rabbit hole, though, make sure you guys check out the next video.